Hello students. Now the topic we are going to discuss is shock. Now for the purpose of simplicity and easy understanding, the topic is covered in three parts that is three videos. Part 1, part 2 and part 3. First video that is part 1 deals with introduction to shock and the different types of shocks. Part 2 that is the second video covers hypovolemic, cardiogenic and obstructive shock along with their therapy. Third video that is the third part cover all the three types of distributive shock namely septic, anaphylactic and neurogenic shock along with their therapy. This is third video that is uh, shock part 3. Now this covers the distributive shock in detail. Now in distributive shock heart pumps well but there is extreme vasodilation and because of extreme vasodilation there is fall in the peripheral resistance which reduces blood pressure and fall in the blood pressure prevents distribution of uh, blood to the tissues that is poor perfusion to tissues that is poor circulation of blood to tissues resulting in ischemia and ischemia further leads to death or necrosis of tissue uh, that leads to organ failure and which progresses to multi-system organ failure. Now distributive shock is of three types uh, namely septic shock, anaphylactic shock and neurogenic shock. Now we'll talk about all these three shocks one by one in detail. Now let's first talk about the pathogenesis or uh, the cause of uh, septic shock. Now microorganisms like bacteria, uh, they release toxins in the blood and these uh, toxins cause poisoning of blood termed as sepsis. Now endotoxins or uh, lipopolysaccharides are released by the bacteria in the blood and uh, uh, these lipopolysaccharides they bind to uh, macrophages. Macrophages are actually monocytes which have penetrated the tissues. So uh, these uh, lipopolysaccharides they bind to macrophages or we can say the monocytes. Uh, these activate the macrophages. Activation of macrophages results in the release of inflammatory mediators like uh, tissue necrotic factor, platelet activating factor, interleukins 1, 2, 6, 8, 12, uh, inflammatory mediator like nitric oxide. So all these inflammatory mediators are released. Now these inflammatory mediators they further activate polymorphonuclear uh, leukocytes that is uh, white blood cells, macrophages, lymphocytes. And there is further enhanced release of uh, these inflammatory mediators. Now these inflammatory mediators when they reach the hypothalamus, they reset the hypothalamic temperature resulting in fever and further they cause tachycardia, they cause tachynia, tachynia is the rapid breathing. And uh, these inflammatory mediators in the capillary endothelial cells, they cause platelet aggregation. And platelet aggregation is responsible for the formation of clots. And the clots which are formed within the blood vessels are termed as thrombi. So there is formation of thrombus that is thrombosis and disseminated intravascular coagulation that is coagulation in the blood vessels. Now coagulation in the blood vessels or thrombus in the blood vessels results in uh, results in cellular hypoxia means those blood vessels which possess thrombi they are unable to supply blood to the uh, uh, to the tissues so therefore there is cellular hypoxia there is ischemia there is reduced oxygen uh, supply to those tissues further in the blood vessels these uh, uh, inflammatory mediators they cause a uh, uh, synthesis of nitric oxide which is responsible for the uh, excessive vasodilation of blood vessels. Excessive vasodilation uh, reduce the peripheral resistance, reduce the blood pressure again it results in ischemia and that is cellular hypoxia. So factors, uh, uh, the most important factors like thrombosis, uh, disseminated intravascular coagulation, vasodilation are responsible for ischemia or cellular hypoxia. Ischemia or the reduced supply of oxygen to the tissues uh, further results in the tissue death. 
uh, that is tissue de death that is termed as necrosis followed by organ failure followed by multi organ failure and if it is not treated in time it is fatal and it results in the death of the individual now when we talk about the treatment of septic shock uh, the first uh, strategy is to administer the fluids, uh, fluids that is isotonic crystalloids like uh, Ringer lactate and normal saline that is 0.9% sodium chloride. Uh, then uh, administration of plasma substitutes. A second is the use of vasoconstrictors uh, that is sympathomimatic which constrict the blood vessels uh, which uh, because of the vasoconstriction there is increase in the peripheral resistance there is increase in the blood pressure that improves circulation of uh, blood to the tissues. So use of the vasoconstrictors like norepinephrine and dopamine and uh, the third uh, and one of the most important uh, strategies to administer the antibiotics. Now actually the source of infection that is the bacteria should be cultured to know the exact type of infection, to know the exact type of bacteria. Now till then empirical therapy is to be provided by broad spectrum antibiotics like uh, ceftriazone. So these are uh, the treatment uh, steps uh, or these are the treatments which are should be provided in order to manage the septic shock. Now uh, let's talk about the second type of uh, distributed uh, shock that is anaphylactic shock. Now this is a shock due to severe allergic reaction and the shock due to severe allergic reaction is called as anaphylaxis. Now uh, the anaphylaxis is caused uh, because of the allergens, uh, it is caused because of the antigens, antigens or allergens like uh, penicillin, a uh, drug like penicillin uh, which causes anaphylaxis, uh, then allergen like food, the food can also cause allergy, uh, drugs for example sulfur drugs, they, uh, in uh, individuals, uh, sulfur drugs can produce allergy, then uh, chemicals, insect bite, venom. Uh, these can be the allergens or these can be the antigens. Now these uh, antigens or uh, allergens, uh, these are processed by the uh, macrophages. Uh, macrophages are actually the monocytes, uh, the activated monocytes. So uh, these allergens or the antigens, they are activated by the macrophages. Uh, further the allergen is presented to T helper cell and there is release of inflammatory mediators like interleukin 2, 4, 5 and which further stimulates uh, the plasma cells to produce antibodies that is immunoglobulin E antibodies. Now these antibodies they further uh, stimulate uh, mast cells and basophils and the stimulation or the degranulation of mast cells causes release of histamine. Basophils also produce histamine. So histamine is the most important mediator which is responsible for the uh, anaphylactic shock which is responsible for the anaphylaxis. Apart from the histamine there is release of other inflammatory mediators uh, like for example leukotrienes, platelet activating factors, prostaglandins and many more. Now as we have already said that histamine is the most important inflammatory mediator. It is the prime inflammatory mediator which is responsible for anaphylaxis. So this histamine uh, it produces uh, bronchoconstriction it causes severe bronchoconstriction and because of the constriction of bronchi the person is unable to breathe and further it results in severe respiratory distress and therefore the patient should be uh, supplemented should be uh, supplied with oxygen with the face mask immediately then apart from this histamine uh, it uh, causes uh, hypotension, it, it causes uh, dilation of the blood vessels and dilation of the blood vessels results in hypotension, fall in blood pressure, uh, it results in tachycardia, vasodilation as I have already said and vasodilation fur further results in increase in the vascular permeability and because of the increase in the vascular permeability there is exudation of fluids that is fluids they leak out from the blood in the tissues and that results in the tissue edema. And further histamine is responsible for flushing that is the redness of the skin because of excessive uh, vasodilation. Then it can also cause urticaria that is appearance of red rashes on the skin. Uh, then vasodilation leads to angioedema that is swelling under the skin. And this histamine is also responsible for itching, uh, excessive itching, severe itching due to the release of inflammatory mediators. So uh, these are the 
these are the symptoms uh, which are seen in the anaphylaxis and all these symptoms are primarily caused because of the excess release of histamine because of the degranulation of mast cells and uh, release from the basophils. Uh, when we talk about the management of uh, anaphylactic shock, uh, injectable epinephrine is a universally accepted first line therapy and uh, epinephrine uh, since it is a sympathomimatic, uh, it is a very potent vasoconstrictor. It constricts the blood vessels, it increases the blood pressure and uh, that improves the blood uh, that improves the tissue perfusion and further vasoconstriction prevents edema, it prevents the leakage of uh, uh, fluids in the tissues and uh, uh, epinephrine also blocks release of uh, inflammatory mediators. So, epinephrine is a first line therapy and apart from the uh, epinephrine patient uh, patient should uh, uh, be made to lie in the supine position that is lying horizontally with the face upwards and uh, crystalloids uh, that is the saline uh, crystalloids they should be administered so as to improve the perfusion of tissues uh, like for example uh, normal saline uh, ringer lactate Oxygen should be provided by the face mask as uh, there is a bronchoconstriction and uh, antihistamines uh, should be provided as they uh, control the allergy and if required corticosteroids can be administered as they are very potent immunosuppressant and anti-inflammatory agents. So this is about the uh, management of anaphylactic shock. This slide talks about uh, neurogenic shock. Uh, neurogenic shock is a consequence of uh, traumatic injury to the spinal cord. Uh, now this injury to the spinal cord can be caused by an accident or it can be a sports injury. It can be an injury by gunshot or uh, administration of uh, medication or improper administration of uh, spinal anesthetic. So there is damage to the spinal cord and uh, because of the damage to the spinal cord the sympathetic tract of the spinal cord is disrupted as we know that there are two types of autonomic uh, tracts one is a sympathetic and another is a parasympathetic so here because of the spinal cord injury there is damage or there is disruption of the sympathetic tract of the spinal cord and this results in unopposed uh, vagal tone that is unopposed parasympathetic tone and this unopposed parasympathetic tone causes uh, excessive vasodilation it causes excessive peripheral vasodilation which causes uh, high, which causes uh, hypotension which causes fall in the blood pressure uh, which results in the poor perfusion of the tissues poor supply of blood to the tissues and because of that there is ischemia further there is necrosis further there is organ failure and if it is not treated properly it can be uh, neurogenic shock can be fatal now when we talk about the clinical features uh, as we have already seen vasodilation causes hypotension there is fall in the blood pressure and apart from this uh, as uh, we have already discussed that uh, uh, there is autonomic dysreflexia that is uncoordinated autonomic responses because sympathetic tone is disrupted whereas some parasympathetic tone is enhanced there is temperature dysregulation uh, there is bradycardia because of the excessive vehicle tone now management of the neurogenic shock uh, is similar to the uh, management of other shocks uh, but uh, here uh, as the uh, as there is injury in the spine most important is the uh, initial uh, spine immobilization to prevent further damage to the spinal cord and then administra administration of uh, norepinephrine uh, as vasopressor and inotropic agent as we have already uh, discussed there is excessive vasodilation norepinephrine is a sympathomimatic it constructs a blood vessel by constructing the blood vessels it increases peripheral resistance it increases blood pressure it increases supply of uh, blood to the tissues and norepinephrine is also an inotropic agent it increases force of contraction of cardiac muscles and therefore there is increase in the cardiac output bradycardia because of excessive vagal tone can be treated because can be treated with atropin now administer uh, isotonic crystalloids like normal saline and ringer lactate uh, so this is how neurogenic shock is managed and so this is all about uh, three types of distributive shocks uh, that is uh, septic shock anaphylactic shock and neurogenic shock 
and if you find the session helpful kindly like subscribe and share this video you can write your doubts in the comment section i will surely answer all your doubts and uh, thanks for uh, watching the video